So if you read much about entrepreneurship or international business, you probably at some point have heard it said that Europe is anti-business or anti-entrepreneur. And what I want to do in this video is just share my own experiences as someone who was an entrepreneur in Vancouver, Canada and has been in Europe for about four years now uh, and officially does business here now in one way or the other. And there's lots of entrepreneurial friends around the world. I wanted to just share my own experiences about the differences of doing business and entrepreneurship in Europe versus North America. Now, I am not a, an economist and I'm not an academic. Thank God I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. These are just my own experiences. So I thought of doing this video when I was talking to an entrepreneur here in Prague and she mentioned something about her parents not really supporting her, like her friends and family were doubting her and how this is a very Czech thing. And I told her, nope, that's how it works everywhere in the world. In North America, when you say, I wanna start my own business, most of the time in most social groups, friends and family kind of look at you like you're crazy and say, you should get a job. So that is not a European thing. But there are a lot of differences in how hard it is to get started. The first one that really bugs me, to be honest, is the minimum cost. So I'll use Spain as an example, but there's this applies in other countries. In Spain, if you want to be a freelancer, you have to register. And once you register, you have to pay something like 200 euros every month to just be a freelancer. Doesn't sound like much, but let's think about that. 200 euros is the equivalent for me when I was getting started, would have been about 300 Canadian dollars. Also, the incomes are much lower in Spain. So 200 euros in Spain is the equivalent of maybe four or $500 in the US or Canada in terms of what that money is worth to someone. Now, when I started freelance writing, I earned $300 or so on some of my first jobs. My first invoices, I think, where I was charging $16 an hour, were like $140. If I had to have paid four or $500 to the government every month, I would never have been able to get started freelancing. And I would have had to get a job and I wouldn't be here on YouTube right now making these videos about entrepreneurship. I wouldn't have started a company. None of this would have happened because I couldn't have afforded that minimum cost. To me, that's crazy, especially when you have a country like Spain, which has over 25% unemployment among its youth. That's a no brainer to make freelancing easy, let them start in business for themselves. But that kind of bureaucracy and red tape is very common in Europe. Uh, I've noticed the same thing happening here in the Czech Republic as my uh, girlfriend is registering her business properly and all that. There's minimum costs that come up that to me when I moved here wasn't a big deal, right? Got registered, had to pay the equivalent of a couple hundred euro a month. Not a huge deal at that point. But when you're getting started, especially when the average income in the Czech Republic is five, 600 euro, uh, maybe a thousand euro for a good entry level job a month. So if you have to pay a one or 200 euro right off the bat when you're starting for yourself, that's a big difference. Along those same lines, there is a lot more workers' rights here. Good or bad, we can argue about that another day. But some examples, and again, this is just off the top of my head, I'm not an academic or a lawmaker here, but I believe in Germany, once you give someone a permanent contract, you basically can't fire them unless they show up to the office naked. And in parts of Germany, that's okay too. This South, they do whatever they want. But Northern Germany, they show up naked, you can fire them, right? But really, it, it can be really hard to fire employees. And you also have a lot of costs. So usually whatever you pay the employee, you pay about the same amount to the government in terms of paying for their uh, social and responsive, or not responsibilities, uh, social taxes, pension, all this kind of stuff. You pay on behalf as the employer. That adds up as well. So when you're just getting started, let's say you're trying to do a business, not freelancing, but a business where you need a few employees. Suddenly your costs are a lot higher. You can't just grab a couple people, say, hey, can I pay you like eight bucks an hour? We get this ice cream stand started or whatever. And then once you get going, then you start hiring them properly. That kind of red tape makes it a lot harder to grow and expand. The theme with all this is that getting started is definitely harder. In Canada, and I, so when I compare North America and Canada, I'm actually from Canada, but I'm kind of comparing them together. Um, in Canada, when you start as a freelancer, you pretty much, unless I was breaking the rules the whole time, if so, don't tell Canada, uh, you pretty much just say, hey, I'm Dan, pay me. Like, I'm a freelancer, and then you're a freelancer. If you wanna register your business name, it's like $40. Um, but if you wanna do business in your own name, you just do business. If you're just doing something that doesn't require a license, like not a restaurant or a therapist, but if you're just doing like freelance design work or whatever, you just do the freelance design work and you get paid. And at the end of the year, you pay your taxes, which means let's say you're starting in January and you have no money. 
You have a whole year to get going to earn money and all that, and then you pay your taxes at the end of the year. You have no upfront costs at all and no ongoing costs to be an employee or sorry, to be a freelancer where you have to like pay fees and all that. That's a big difference. Also, if you want to do something part time, it makes a big difference if you don't have to pay money into a system and you don't have to register and do all this. Uh, so getting started is much harder in Europe, which plays in with the amount of bureaucracy in Europe in general. I also think that growing beyond a certain level is a lot harder. So because of really high taxes and regulation and a lot of the other costs that factor into business, such as uh, paid maternity leave, some countries it's a year or longer for paid maternity leave, um, these make it hard for a small business owner. Yes, workers' rights, all for that. I think a lot of the social benefits in Europe are a good thing, but if you're a small business owner where you're struggling yourself, right? You have a little shop, you have two or three employees. It's hard if you have an employee who's like, hey, I'm pregnant now. You got to pay me for the next year and hire someone else and pay them. Like, good luck making a profit this year, right? And I think a lot of this comes around. I don't think it's some big conspiracy, but I do think the structure in Europe makes it harder to change class or to change uh, social economic position, right? So if you want to go from being kind of lower class, poor, and then you want to reach you know, the wealthy side of society, it's a lot harder. Getting started is harder. Uh, moving up is harder. You're taxed a lot more. There's a lot more regulation. There is more of this um, ingrained class system in a way that is set up in a way to really keep people there um, and make it harder and harder to break through. Another example of this is a friend of mine in Denmark who uh, does coaching around ADHD work, uh, said that in Scandinavia, and this is for, I think, Europe in general, people are really heavy on the official credentials. So unless you have a PhD, you're not going to be hired by a lot of companies, a lot of organizations. This is different than in North America, where if you're, you know, you write a really good book about a topic or you just gain knowledge, you become a really good coach on a certain area, people aren't really asking like, well, what was your university? What was your background? Um, because they're looking at what you actually do and your results rather than kind of your credentials. And uh, whether that's a good or bad thing we can you know, argue about, I do think that letting like anyone suddenly be a coach without credentials or things like that, especially in medical areas, is sort of messed up. But on the same note, requiring people to do six years of school to get a PhD in something before you'll hire them is kind of weird as well. And again, it adds to this barrier of entry of if you have to support your family, you can't necessarily go back to school for six years and get a PhD, but you can't get the good kind of uh, coaching jobs you want without those credentials and it creates a cycle and then um, it can be a lot harder. So if you look at the business landscape in general, you'll find Europe innovates a lot less. If you look at the big startups in Berlin, most of them, not all, but they're kind of knockoffs of American ones or they're the German version of an American startup that came out a few years ago. You don't get as much of the originality. And I think some of that is because of the difference in people. People are not as big of risk takers. And there's reasons for that. If you look at the rules, the way society is set up is it doesn't necessarily benefit the risk taker as much. And it creates a lot more red tape to make it harder for people to get started. If you look at most startups like that are now billion dollar companies, they usually started with some broke people in a garage or someone like just starting something and seeing what will happen, which if you need to like register and get a business license before you can start doing stuff in your garage, we might not have an Apple or a Google or Microsoft at this point. Um, so that's a big difference in the environment as well, the kind of innovation, risk taking, and that I think comes from the bureaucracy, but then it also creates people's personalities. People think a lot differently for it. And you look at that and then you combine it with the fact that university is usually free here. So it's very common that people will stay in school until they're 28 or 30 and do like a master's and a PhD because it's free and, uh, and they think they need all these credentials to succeed. So you get a lot less of the kind of young entrepreneurs, I would say. So all that said, if you have the spirit for it, if you're coming over here as a North American or you're someone in Europe who has more of a North American capitalist attitude, there are still a ton of opportunities in Europe. Um, there's a lot like Prague is insane. There's a new restaurant and cafe opening like, within blocks of my apartment every week. So you do have booming markets. You have a lot of uh, opportunities to do well, a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurship. 
because as I mentioned, the, the attitudes about risk taking means that for those who will take risks, who the, for those who will go for it, there's a lot more opportunities and I would say less competition as well. Um, especially if you innovate and you don't just knock off, you know, whatever people are doing in North America and then do a localized language version here, which is what a lot of people do. Similarly, if you are like a digital nomad or a location independent entrepreneur and you're already established, setting up in Europe can be uh, a great thing. You get a, a really nice lifestyle. The time zone is really beneficial compared to North America. You can wake up a bit later, get your core work done before your clients in North America wake up. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities as well. So I've really enjoyed coming as a Canadian with a capitalist sort of entrepreneurial risk-taking mindset, coming to Europe and getting to enjoy a bit of the slower pace of life, a bit of the European way. Well, in my case, my business is based very internationally and I have kind of minimal uh, paperwork and bureaucracy. And when I do, I just pay someone here to do it all. So I've had a really good experience, uh, just in my own case, coming over here as a Canadian. To do business locally or to start up, like if you are European, you definitely have more costs, more red tape, and uh, that probably explains a lot in terms of what we see with companies. So those are my opinions and my observations living here. I would love to hear your own experiences if you've lived in Europe or you're just a loudmouth YouTube troll who wants to share their unjustified, uneducated opinions. Please do so in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to know more about living in Europe or entrepreneurship, working for yourself, or just me, subscribe to the channel and catch me in one of the new videos published every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thanks for watching.